I wanted to ask each of you in turn about the origin, about what you feel you would do if you had more time, <laughs> and also what you think you would like left behind. Per Liz's comment that design practice is the building of understanding and what you would like those who follow you to carry forward from, from what you have. Um, starting with Ray and, and writing, um, I like very much how you started with the gaps and you built to a design idea. What led you in particular to stories? You, it's clear they're deeply human and you feel that strongly. Is there an origin story for your interest in this topic? Um, I began my thesis journey really looking at, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> I began my thesis journey looking at um, kind of education and learning um, very broadly. And um, somewhere along the way, I realized that I was focusing on trying to solve a specific problem within that space. Um, and all of the problems that exist in that space are so wicked and so complex that I realized that where I needed to focus was on where my own love of learning came. And my own love of learning really came through, through books, through reading. Um, and so the focus initially was reading, but as I, as I looked more into literacy and how traditional literacy is changing, uh, the focus kind of switched from reading to writing, and that's kind of sort of where things started. It is a beautiful moment of transition where the technology allows us to make this jump from simply consuming to, to creating as well. Um, Megan, your, your story, your interest is a very topical one. Just last night on Frontline, there was an extraordinary show which continues in another part that I recommend to everyone about surveillance and so on. What brought you to this topic? I used to work at UNICEF. Um, uh, one of my first jobs was at UNICEF and we created platforms and tools for kids to use. And so one of the fundamental things that we thought about when building tools was their pri the kids' privacy and um, their safety when communicating on these platforms. So when the NSA news broke out last summer, um, I saw a lot of shrugging and apathy from people I, were, I was around. Um, and so because it hit me at a gut level, um, I decided to choose that direction as my thesis focus because it felt personal to me. It's gripping. I, the story that went by in your example was just completely gripping. I wanted to read it all. I wanted to know it all. It, it is deeply human. As, it's as outside. Oh, great. Good. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a look. Pam, similarly, your topic is very deep and very emotional. I, I sense immediately where it comes from. You presented it from that form. Um, I loved your comment that conversation is the way to bring about change. How have you changed personally in this process of bringing this project forward? Well, it's <laughs> a good question. Um, it's definitely widened my perspectives because during this process, I talked to many different kinds of people about their opinions about race, um, what they like talking about it, what they don't like talking about it, and it built more empathy for me because I always had this one perception of what race is about, but in fact, it's very different. We all have very different experiences, and that's helped me understand more of how I should design this, this, this 20 questions. Were you ever tempted to look towards someone who was clearly English or Italian and say, well, where are you really from? <laughs> yeah, I actually, there's a classmate of mine, <laughs> um, Adam. <laughs> how, how did that come out? <laughs> Well, he actually, um, I, I showed this, this video for him um, where this white American was asking this Japanese American woman where she was from, and he kept pestering, and then she in turn asked him, so where are you really from? And so Adam thought this was really funny and started asking everyone this. <laughs> that's, that's something to carry forward, I think, as an experience. In terms of what you wish you could have gotten to or what you would want to do if you had more time? Are there things that are annoying at you or just? Of course. <laughs> please, please tell us. Um, well, I've been talking to NYU with their diversity program and they have this class where they have students come in and they talk about these issues too and we've talked about piloting this product with them and I think going forward I'm gonna continue with this, this project and work with NYU. But you didn't say what, 
sort of functionally, I'm sorry oh, to functionally. ask such a specific project question. What? Hmm. I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. We'll come back. Okay. We'll see. It's a very unfair question, but of course, as students know, I like knowing what the limits are and, and what you feel like you could have done more about or what the limits of a particular design might be. Megan, can I impose on you for that question? Technically? Um, I have three stories at this point hmm. on the platform. More stories. Um, more stories mm -hmm. would make it, mm -hmm. make the aggregated annotation mm -hmm. section a lot richer. And functionally? Functionally, um, I would go more into detail with each story. At this point, it's MVP. Um, at, at, at Minimum an MVP viable product. Level, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very similar answer to Megan. It's, I think, more stories and um, just technically um, and sort of learning to code as going as I was going through the prototype. I think I would have liked to dig a little bit deeper into um, how the specifics of, of parts of the, the program work. Okay. okay. Did you have a thought? I did. <laughs> um, I did wish that, it, uh, that I built a more fully functional prototype. Um, and I also wish that... I included other features such as voice, because right now it's just through text messaging. And I, some of my testing I did uh, with voice, and that was a completely different experience, and I would want that there. It's always hard to know where to draw the boundaries, particularly since you're hurtling toward this very day. I, I hope it feels good that you've made it. You've done great work. So the final question is, again, in this notion that design should have a legacy, design work, MFA, PhD, should have a legacy and carry forward and build on other other people's work and build new knowledge, which of course is the, the goal of education anyhow. What would you like others who would go in the same direction, building on stories, building on surveillance, building on race? What do you feel like you've learned that you would like them to build from? If you like. I think for me, um, building wordplay um, there was this, a work by uh, Henry Jenkins and a number of other academics called Reading in a Participatory Culture. And I think some of the lessons that I learned there is kind of what I would like to see moving forward in that um, recognizing that learning is both inside and outside the classroom, recognizing that giving student young people a voice is so important and equally as important to getting through the basics of like reading and writing and just knowing that you have the power to contribute and that your contributions matter. I would want people to be more open about perspectives other or perspectives and experiences other than their own or their peers. Um, what I've learned through working on surveillance issues is it's very hard to relate to somebody if you don't know them personally. Um, especially as their experience with surveillance is a private one. Um, so I would encourage people to try to relate to the issues of surveillance because they're a lot more um, gr grounded than the media um, portrays it to be. I would want people to, especially with this topic that's so charged emotionally, to feel comfortable talking about it and that it's, it's not something that should be feared. And this is a framework not just for race, but other difficult conversations, like I mentioned before, that can be used to ease tensions with genders and different religions. And Thank you very much. Really appreciate it all. Around. Thank you. So part of the day is hearing about the ideas, and the, the other part is um, experiencing them. So in the exhibition area in front, all the prototypes that you've just heard about are available for you to, to take a look at and ask um, the presenters questions and um, have some coffee and, and snacks. So we have about a 15-minute break if you just want to 
stretch your legs or go take a look at the exhibition. We'll be back in 15.